Fans of the Brady Bunch have likely watched and rewatched many an episode over the years, and because of that, they likely see the actors and characters they played as being one and the same. It's hard to imagine that any other actor play a part that you love and you've seen over and over. Yet, did you know the actors on the Brady Bunch almost didn't end up playing their respective characters? Like every Hollywood production, there were many people considered for each role. Stick around as Facts First presents These Famous Actors Were Almost Cast in the Brady Bunch Family. Mike and Carol Brady While everyone knows that Robert Reed and Florence Henderson played the roles of the Brady parents, Mike and Carol, there were a couple of other prominent actors strongly considered. Jeffrey Hunter was a handsome actor in the 1960s who nearly starred in not one, but two legendary shows. Sadly, neither worked out for him. Hunter's first near miss came when he was cast as the commander of the Starship Enterprise on the pilot episode of Star Trek. His character was Captain Christopher Pike. Unfortunately for Hunter and the rest of the people on that pilot, the network was unimpressed. Pressed. They ended up scrapping the show and starting again from scratch. Of course, as we all know, the pilot was recast with William Shatner as Captain Kirk, and the rest is history. Hunter was also nearly Mike Brady, or at least he tested for the network. A column by Hollywood journalist Sidney Skolsky at the time revealed that Jeffrey Hunter had been given a serious look by the network brass, but they ultimately passed on him. Another name that was given in the article as having tested for the show was Bob Holliday. Holliday was a hunky actor who had just finished playing Superman on Broadway in a show called It's a Bird, It's a Plane, It's Superman. But the producers and network decided Holliday was not the right fit for Mike Brady either. They ended up going with Robert Reed. Diane McBain was a beautiful blonde actress considered for the role of Carol Brady. McBain at one point had a contract with Warner Brothers after having been discovered acting in a high school play. She was in the movie Parish in 1961, a drama about the tobacco industry. She then acted in a slew of TV offerings, including Surfside 6 and Batman. She even played opposite Elvis in his 1966 film Spin Out. But as with Hunter and Holiday, McBain tested for the role and was not chosen. Ultimately, they went with Florence Henderson, who had been making a name for herself at that point on Broadway. Cindy Brady Susan Olsen is known for playing Cindy Brady, the youngest of the Brady daughters. Susan was known for her adorable demeanor, as well as a propensity to wear her hair in braids or curls for the first few seasons. Susan played the part brilliantly, and she made audiences fall in love with her darling character over and over each week. And yet she almost lost out on the part to a very prominent actress, or at least she's very prominent now. On the Bravo show Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, several of the former Brady Bunch actors were asked about the behind-the-scenes aspects of the show. This included Maureen McCormick, Barry Williams, Eve Plum, Susan Olsen, Christopher Knight, and Mike Lookinland. The actors were there to promote a crossover special between the Food Network and HGTV called A Very Brady Renovation Holiday Edition. This was where the old Brady abode was renovated to modernize it. During the promotional interview, Susan Olsen revealed a very juicy tidbit about her role. She nearly lost it to eventual Oscar winner and acting directing legend Jodie Foster. Reportedly, a young Foster was in the running for the role of Cindy, but ultimately the producers and the network went with Susan. But clearly Foster's career went just fine after after being rejected from this particular role. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. The grueling casting process. The casting process for a major TV show can be intense. There are always several rounds of auditions. Actors have to first prove their chops for casting assistants and casting directors, then for producers, and eventually for the studio and network. And in the later parts of the process, they have to act opposite other potential candidates. This is known as doing chemistry reads, where the top brass can see how well their potential stars match with each other in both acting style and visually. It's an exhausting process for actors and an emotional roller coaster to boot. But Brady Bunch creates creator Sherwood Schwartz knew that even with all that careful vetting, it can be extremely tricky to cast children. He knew that for starters, the roles of the Brady kids would be fairly intense for whatever kid actors they picked. He also knew the success of the show would rely heavily on how well the child actors did in their lead parts. One strategy Schwartz used, with great success, was to try to replicate a little of the experience on set. He knew that life on set can be incredibly distracting, sometimes boring, and overall not easy. So during the auditions with the child actors, he intentionally left toys on his desk. These were there precisely to distract the actors as they auditioned. And basically, when any of the kids were able to either look at the toys but not play with them, or ignore them completely, he would write that info down. This played a big part in choosing which kids could handle being on set. He knew if they could manage not to be distracted during the audition by fun toys, they'd be able to handle the rigors of life on a sitcom set. 
And Schwartz clearly didn't take the casting of the Brady kids lightly. According to the Internet Movie Database, he and the casting team auditioned 464 boys and girls in total. He later said he also wanted to make sure he got the kids' parts nailed down before casting their parents. But of chief importance were making sure the kids looked like their parents. Of course, this was tricky since he didn't yet know what the parents would look like. Though clearly he had a sense already that he wanted to cast a white couple and that their hair would either be dark or blonde. Because as a safeguard, Schwartz originally cast 12 kids. He cast six kids with blonde hair in case the parents ended up blonde too. And he cast six with dark hair in case the parents ended up with dark hair. Ultimately, after casting Florence Henderson, he had to let go of the girl actors with dark hair. So Carol Brady's daughters would look like her. And after casting Robert Reed as Mike, he had to let the blonde boys go as they didn't match the hair of their dad. Certainly a tough break for those six kids who were nearly cast on the Brady Bunch, but their hair color held them back. Now it's time to hear from you. Can you imagine any of the Brady parts going to other actors? Do you think the show would have been basically the same, or would it have completely changed the dynamic? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Faxverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.